All right, YouTube, so we are back, of course, talking about some Final Fantasy VII Remake, sort of, but also just kind of some general FF7, Square Enix information, news, whatever you call it. We're talking about the trademarks again. Now, I saw the other day that there's updates to all three trademarks, the Shinra logo, the First Soldier, and, of course, Ever Crisis, but I've not seen any websites or anybody talking about the First Soldier being updated. It's just Ever Crisis and the Shinra logo that I've seen so far. So I'm not entirely sure if First Soldier has been updated as well with what we're talking about today. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. I'm just not seeing it. But for now, we're just talking about Ever Crisis and the Shinra logo. Originally, these trademarks were filed last year in December, but they didn't go public until like a couple weeks back earlier in January. And it was only in Japan where these trademarks were filed. But here recently, these trademarks were also filed in Canada and Europe for Ever Crisis and, of course, the Shinra logo. And as of right now, with the information that I have that I'm able to come across and find, I'm only seeing the Shinra logo being filed in Europe right now. I don't see it also filed in Canada. Similar to the first soldier situation, I don't know if that's entirely accurate. I think some of these websites have different information because it wasn't until I went back to the Gamatsu article, which is the initial article we looked at when these trademarks first kind of went public. They are the only website that I've seen that have mentioned the updated Shinra logo, whereas other ones are just talking about the Ever Crisis trademark. So it would seem like a lot of these websites don't have the most up-to-date information, but regardless of all that, the point of why we're talking about this and covering this is them filing new trademarks for this in other countries definitely adds to these being something important, whatever they may be mobile game, another CGI movie for some reason, spin-off game, subtitle for remake, the overall, Ever Crisis being like the overall name for the remake project, like whatever all of this is, the fact that they're going and, and filing for trademarks somewhere else means that it is something important. And of course, it's kind of hard to say what we think these are. We kind of have talked about it a few times, back and forth with different ideas. I'm going forward right now with the idea, like I mentioned in a previous video, the Ever Crisis is kind of the umbrella term for the remake project so that it fits into the naming convention of the ff7 compilation but of course when it comes to ever crisis that makes you think of zach we've seen zach at the end of remake so it's possible that that is in relation to him whether he's a big part of part two so maybe part two's sub name is ever crisis and that it's referencing zach with that or maybe it's like a dlc or something for part one whenever it like re-releases on like ps5 or whatever and the other platforms maybe there's like some sort of like dlc that comes out that's zach oriented we figure out what's going on with zach or something i don't know maybe you play like a dlc that's like a shortened down version of Crisis Core. Like maybe you get to go through like the big story beats of Crisis Core. Maybe that's whatever Crisis is. Like there's a lot of possibilities. Or maybe it's the re-release of Crisis Core finally. Maybe they figured out the legal situations with the Gact and all that stuff. Maybe they changed Genesis' face so it doesn't look like him. So they, they could do it. Change voice actors and stuff. Like I don't know. Who knows what the hell's going on. And actually, as I recorded that part and thinking about it, like a short down version of Crisis Core as like a DLC for remake wouldn't be bad. Like I think for one, we'd all like to play that. Like Crisis Core, but in the remake style and the remake engine. But also for like the newer players, like say you're brand new to FF7, like Remake is your first game. You see this black haired guy at the end of the game that also has the same sort as Cloud. You have no idea who that guy is. This all really comes down to what exactly they're trying to do with Remake when it comes to Cloud's faulty memories and the history he has with Zack and the truth of what actually happened in Nibelheim all those years ago, right? Like, are they trying to keep that shit a secret like they did with the original game until like later on in Game 2 or Game 3 or something like that? Or are they just going to come right at the beginning of Part 2 and be like, yo, this is the truth? And you gotta assume with the end of Remake and them showing us Zack and him potentially being alive. If Zack is alive, that's gonna have a major impact on the story to some degree. Somehow, somewhere, sometime, that's gonna have a major impact. So I'd presume that'd be us, the player, or maybe the characters within the game, our group, finding out the truth of Cloud's past a lot sooner than in the original game, which I think honestly makes a lot of sense. You gotta assume that, you know, the game sold like, what, 8 million copies? At least a majority of those people, 51% or more, played the original game. We already know the truth and the history. You don't need to, like, string us along and jerk feed us this information. What is or isn't the truth? We know the truth, right? We played the original FF7. So I could see them, whether it's a DLC or it's part two, us finding out that information a hell of a lot sooner now. It's like, you don't need to wait till, like, this big reveal later on in the game. It's relatively known information. We kind of went off on a bit of a tangent there, but I guess I want to talk about that stuff. And now, as for the Shinra logo, we haven't done a whole lot of talking about this, kind of brushed it off a lot. But I do want to discuss something because I, I plan on doing like a big discussion on the way the logo looks for the trademark, but I don't think it necessarily matters. And why I say that is because a lot of people are putting emphasis on the fact that the logo for the trademark doesn't have the English words on it, Shinra Electric Power Company, which admittedly is kind of interesting. Like, it is kind of weird. It's been like that since the original game in 97, right? It's always had the English words on it, so it is a bit intriguing. But why I don't know if it matters or not is because when you go to, like, the Canadian trademark website, it just says graphic representation. So I don't know if that's, like, the finalized logo for whatever this is trademarked for. As in, maybe this image is just sort of a placeholder for the logo. Maybe they have ideas, potentially, to change up just a little bit for whatever they're going to use it for. But even still, even if it is a placeholder image, I don't know why you'd get rid of the Shinra Electric Power Company that's been on there for 20-plus years. So maybe the word's missing is significant to something, but it's hard to really say.
Square Enix already sells Final Fantasy VII merchandise that has the original Shinra logo on it, so maybe there is significance to the words missing. Maybe because it looks slightly different from the original, they had to refile the trademark, so maybe they do plan on using the logo without the English words for something. And if I had to make a guess, some speculation on the significance of the words missing, my first thought is maybe an early rendition, an early version of the logo, because they weren't always the Shinra Electric Power Company, there was something before that. Anyways, my dudes, that's pretty much the video. It's a little bit longer than I was planning. We had a little more of a discussion than I was planning. I was really just going to cover the trademarks being filed in other countries, and that was kind of going to be the video. But we went off and talked a little bit. Whatever. I'd assume going forward over the next couple of days or weeks, we're going to see these trademarks pop up in other countries as well, like North America. But I guess that remains to be seen. Either way, I'm super interested still to see whatever the hell these are. That's the video, my dudes. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We'll see if more Final Fantasy VII remake content and trademark stuff. Turn on my notifications, follow me on Twitter, Dash and David YT, I'm my Discord, links to my social networks are in the description, in the outro. Later, guys. Used to care what people thought, but now I care more, and nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending, depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect, we spend it with no shame, we blow that. Like old train, we in here, like Rogaine, or leave it, like Cobain.